Now I will uh, sort of present uh, our data in the uh, sort audit of the Medanta uh, robotic programs. Starting on 2010, we uh, started with 77 cases and we multiplied it almost by six times uh, to 423 in 2013. And these are the contributing speciali uh, specialties, majority being better urology and followed by the gynae and then the thoracic. <coughs> However, it was not a smooth sailing at all and we had our share of non-surgical complications. Two patients developed pressure alopecia uh, because of the non-availability of the soft uh, head rings initially, and they have circumscribed loss of blood uh, hair, and then, then we acquired the soft, uh, soft uh, head rings, and then almost 1% uh, patient had clinically significant head and neck edema in our non-transplant patients, and this figure is almost 70% in our transplant patients. Delayed recovery was observed in four of our patients, and two patients had to be kept under ventilation for 12 hours. Tube migration and kinking of the robotic uh, kinking of the tube by the robotic arms was observed in two of the thoracic patients. Conjunctival edema was observed in almost 10% patient of our non-transplant patients, and almost 100% in transplant patients because of the hyperproteinemic status of these patients. And one patient had an arrest. It was a tension pneumothorax contralateral that Madam has already described. And that patient had to be opened to revive. And then uh, two patients developed DVTs in the post-op. And two patients developed vascular complications. Uh, after this, uh, uh, this vascular complications was in the form of limb ischemia, upper limb ischemia because of the, by the strapping, uh, strapping used to keep the arms tucked to the table. And later on, uh, no complication, no, uh, it was managed conservatively without any side effects. And then eight patients developed neuropraxia in the form of uh, most commonly common peroneal nerve injury. And robotic malfunction was observed in three of our patients, three of our three incidences. In this uh, one, in one patient of thoracic, uh, uh, thoracic surgery, it was converted to bats and two patients, uh, we had to bring in the other robot because of the malfunction of this. Robot. So are our states too high? And there, let's us see into the reported complications in the robotic surgeries in the world literature. In 2007, Danny Gattel has reported, uh, has analyzed 1,500 cases of robotic prostatectomies, where he has uh, shown that 3% corneal abrasion rate is there, with 0.2% pulmonary embolism, 0.2% da Vinci failure, and 0.06% prolonged intubation. Ocular complication is the most devastating thing that can happen to a patient while, uh, while being operated. And the ASA, uh, American Society of Anesthesiologists 2011 database has shown that there are altogether six, uh, six blindness reported. And out of that six blindness, three was in the open prostatectomies and three, were, three were patients were in the robotic prostatectomies. Two patients in another report by Weber et al, he has reported two patients of blindness after RLP. And retinal tear was observed in one patient after 10 days of RLP. And most common cause of this blindness is where posterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So this is the paper that, that was, I was talking about. And this ASA data, as we have seen, uh, you can see is that there are six patients. And they have a renewed interest in the, in the post operative visual loss incidences in robotic prostatectomies. This is an important paper. In the table on the top of the, paper, uh, top of the diagram, uh, the, as you can see, the IOP pressure can increase. Okay, the IOP can increase uh, from 14.8 to 35.2 in the trendlock position. And even after the patient is made supine, it does not touch the baseline. It still remains high. So here, uh, even if the mean pressure is maintained to, at a normal range, because of the rise in RP, uh, IOP, the ocular perfusion pressure can come down to a significantly lower level, below the perfusion point. And Molo et al. again in 2012 has devised a scale where he has shown that uh, the baseline IOP, uh, and he has measured the baseline IOP and intermittently IOP in the, during the operation. And he has uh, shown that if the baseline IOP is more than 20 <laughs> and the patient develops chemosis during the operation, probably his intraocular pressure is around 40. So it is the time to intervene. Intraoperative stent thrombosis can be a major issue in, uh, uh, in any kind of surgeries, but in robotic prostatectomies, because of the bleeding, uh, bleeding concerns, we generally tend to avoid the, 
dual antiplatelet drugs for a short period of time before the operation. And in this report, they have uh, commented that after two years of drug eluting stent placement, and uh, this uh, this stent thrombosis has occurred. So uh, no time is immune to development of stent thrombosis. Nerve injury is a uh, uh, nerve injury is, is quite frequently observed in robotic vasectomies. So uh, many et al has shown that six of every 179 consecutive patients can develop lower limb neurologic symptoms, most common being the common peroneal nerve. So the incident, uh, deep venous thrombosis, the incidence can be in abdominal pelvic surgeries ranges from 15 to 40 percent, and then thrombi can develop 5 to 24 days after surgery even. The incidence of DVT and pulmonary embolism, however, may be lower in robotic surgeries because of the early embolization. And uh, 2012 ACCP guidelines states that uh, in non-orthopedic surgical patients with moderate risk of VT, we do not have, uh, who do not have a high risk of intraoperative bleeding, chemical thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin or mechanical sequential compression devices preferred over no prophylaxis. And it, at our setup, we don't uh, regularly follow the thromboprophylaxis, chemical thromboprophylaxis. We only rely upon the mechanical counterpart. Well, the compartment syndrome can be a uh, can occur during robotic pelvic surgeries because of the high up position of the lower limbs and the reduction in the blood flow to the lower extremity because if the main arterial pressure is not maintained properly, and uh, this uh, that disadvantage with this is that because of the compartment syndrome, rhabdomyolysis can occur and this can impair the renal function, and this can be quite significant in a robotic renal transplant. Galen, Galen et al. has reported a three limb compartment syndrome and rhabdomyolysis after robotic cystoprostatectomies where the renal function has deteriorated and was managed uh, in the post operative period. Conversion to open technique in high BMI patients is a real possibility. I mean, uh, it is around 2.3 percent in the world literature and the measure in almost 80 percent of the patients uh, of uh, conversion, the main cause was due to high airway pressure. In our setup, we don't, have not yet uh, opened any patient because of the high airway pressure. Subclinical carbon dioxide embolism is uh, quite frequently observed during uh, robotic radical prostatectomies. It is around 17 percent. People have connected wrong gases to the abdomen also. Instead of CO2, they have connected oxygen leading to intraperitoneal fire. Robotic in instrument manufacturing can be, the incidence can be around 2.6 percent. And there are 168 reports of malfunction to the FDA between 2000 to 2007. And the importance of uh, highlighting this point is that an emergency undocking plans should be always there and regularly practiced in the institute. A little bit about the intracranial considerations in robotic pelvic surgeries. Steep trailer position and pneumoperitoneum can increase the ICT when used alone or in combination. There are only two established risk factors for raised ICT. One is the duration of the procedure and the other one is the carbon dioxide. Cerebral perfusion pressure and regional brain tissue oxygenation is generally well preserved during robotic uh, prostatectomies. And this highlights the importance of maintaining a normal mean arterial pressure. As we can see in the diagram, cerebral provision pressure is maintained at a normal range. However, occasional patients, a couple of patients can come down over the, uh, come down below, below the, this uh, standard mean arterial pressure, uh, cerebral provision pressure. So these are the patients that are at increased risk of developing cerebral ischemia. And it, this diagram shows the regional brain tissue oxygenation that is well maintained during robotic prostatectomies and any kind of pelvic surgery. So we have seen a lot of complications till now uh, and then the question comes whether this is the best technique. The robot is the best technique or we, can, we should uh, do some other technique. So that, then we have to remember that technology is a very human activity. As once said by uh, Albert Einstein, the discovery of nuclear reactions uh, does not bring about the destruction of mankind any more than the discovery of matches. So to summarize, it's the robotic technique is an excellent technological development, but we have to understand that robot has its limitations. So rational use respecting those limitations has to be in place. We as a nation are doing great in adopting the technology. Still now, till now we have 20 centers that have the robot and many more are in the fray. So uh, may we suggest creation of a national database system of robotics to encourage fair reporting and monitor the surgical and other perioperative complications and suggest ways to prevent them. We, the Medi Institute of Anesthesiology and Critical Care at Medanta is committed to support and appreciate any new surgical innovations and contribute meaningfully to its development. Thank you.